Hello everyone and welcome back to another Dots Race video. Today we are going to be using Alex Rins in the fantastic circuit of Silverstone. Of course Alex Rins successful here in the past but things are now different with the Yamaha YZR M1. So I'm going to start from the back of the grid and charge through the field to the highest possible spot that I can possibly finish in here today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's crack on. So here we go then from the worst possible spot on the grid, that's last place. Ride height device enabled and away we go. Little bit sluggish off the line there. I was actually uh, preparing to get off a little bit sooner than the line. They actually hesitated and ended up making a slight mess. But now into the difficult Abbey corner. How do we get through on all of these riders? Hopefully they just move out the way just to let us through. But it's not quite materialising that way into the village corner. We have already gained 12 positions already as we do give... Fabio Di Giantonio, a little bit of a nudge there going into turn three, uh, excuse me, turn four. And yeah, we've now secured eighth place. Good start so far. I don't know how well this is going to go. I'll be honest, not a fan of the Yamaha in Moda GP24. I think it's really sluggish. And as I mentioned last time, I think when I was using Quattararo in Bud, it really struggles to turn. And it's just not a particularly enjoyable bike to use, but I'm prepared for the challenge and I want to give it a try. And I want to say a big shout out to everyone who suggested and recommended Alex Rins for this video here today. Actually had uh, more requests than I thought I would for this particular uh, rider. And uh, I think it's a great combination. The only downside with Alex Rins, I find, is the old school riding style that Milestone give him for this game. It, it's not quite that old school in real life. He does sit up and sort of arch his neck a little bit to the side, but not the same way as this game does it. He barely turns and it feels really odd to look at because <laughs> it feels like you can lean so much more with the Yamaha but unfortunately uh, the character model seems to look like it, it caps at a certain angle. It's not actually that way. You could, the bike is exactly the same as if it would be if you're using your own rider or even Fabio Quattararo. It just visually looks that way. Very strange if I'm truly, truly honest with you as I break extremely late here into the veil corner. That is not going to win any friendship prizes with an Air Bastianini. I think we've been booted off the Christmas card list for that particular overtake. My lord, that was from a long way back and I'm actually expecting some sort of penalty to come up here in a minute because that was really egregious. I took out Colin via the same way in Moto3 career mode. Well, I think I got away with it to be honest. That was a very aggressive overtake, I'll be honest. Just uh, kind of fumbled it a little bit. I thought I could break quite late there, but possibly not that late. Trying to squeeze through and Bastianini there was the only thing I could do, unless I hit him to try and uh, survive. But uh, not a bad start so far. 15 places gained already. And we need to now see what sort of lap times we're doing. Because I'll be honest, I've not touched Silverstone since my first experience with MotoGP24, where I went on with uh, Juan Mir around this circuit and I just did a couple of laps. I think my time trial is still there somewhere. I haven't uh, improved upon that particular uh, lap time set way back when. But for now, I must confess, I do love the circuit at Silverstone. The AI do seem to be a little bit more difficult here compared to last season's game. MotoGP 23, they were quite slow around Maggots and Beckett's. And I'm pleased to say that, oh my god, I just cut the corner there. That is a track limit warning coming in for Alex Rins. Of course, I've just watched yesterday the uh, the Assen Grand Prix. Alex Rins sent to th to moon and back from high siding into the Harbot corner. That was a terrifying, terrifying crash. I'm just glad that Alex Rins is okay. I think he's fractured his wrist and one of his feet as well. So I just hope that Alex Rins is back to full fitness and uh, can try and gain some consistency without always getting battered and bruised. It's a bit like Danny Pedrosa. Always had some good consistency, looked great, and then bang, a crash would happen. Then again, it would build again, Pedro's looking really solid, bang, another crash. And it, so on and so on. So, I'm really hoping that Alex Rins can break out of that slump, the Yamaha improves, and Alex Rins can prove his worth in MotoGP 24, in fact, just in MotoGP in general, I don't need to say 24 at the end of it. And that is a track limit warning going into the Abbey Corner. Well, I must confess, hardest difficulty in the game, I thought I'd be closer to the front than I am. Actually losing a little bit of time here to Maverick ahead of us. 
Great to see Alex Marquez up there in the top five. Of course, he's just signed a contract with Grassini that extends to 2025. I do really like Alex Marquez, and I think he's one of the most underrated talents in MotoGP. He's not really mentioned all that much, but he usually gets some good points in and just does his job as a rider. And you can't really fault Alex Marquez. Seems to keep out of trouble as well, to be honest. Not necessarily trouble on the track. He tends to get beaten up and uh, crashed into. I think was it this season? He, for the first three rounds, he got took out in every single... Oh my god, another track. Let me warning. <laughs> I should be paying attention here. Little, mis little mistakes coming into the early stages of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. And Aya Bastini right behind us now as well. I have to focus on myself rather than talking about Alex uh, Marquez. Oh my god, that's another track limit warning. Four track limit warnings. You've got to start calling me Fermin Aldiger. My goodness, I can't believe I've just done that again. Four track limit warnings. That's probably three on that one lap. Possibly four. That's shocking. I can't believe I've just done that. That is as bad as Fermin Aldiger in Assen. By lap three, he already had a track limit warning and of course had to try and survive then the entire Dutch TT without exceeding track limits again, which is easier said than done when you're pushing on the absolute limit. I'll probably end up getting a long lap penalty in this video here today. <laughs> I would put money on it. I mean, we've got quite a few laps to go, but these lap times are beginning to tick off quite quickly, although it is just barely a sub-two minute, sub minute lap time. Captain Maverick now is 1.4, 1.5. Alex Marquez is a little bit further ahead. Ahead of him in fourth, I do believe that's... Yeah, it's the other Grassini, it's Mark Marquez. Ahead of him is Pe uh, Fabio... Excuse me, Francesco Bagnaia. Then it's Pedro Costa, who's now just crashed. Who's binned it into the loop. And then ahead of him is Jorge Martin. So, in fact, Marquez now on the podium. Pedro Costa's binned it. What on earth happened to the Spaniard? Well, I'm sure I'll show you on the right-hand side of the screen the replay at some point. And that way you can see exactly what's just happened to the Spanish star. Beginning to just struggle a bit recently, hasn't he, Pedro? He's not been right up there at the front like we expected to see after his terrific start in MotoGP. Whoa, we were really close to abusing limits again. We found some time on this lap, but of course it's not significant to put ourselves into the conversation of fastest lap time. Martin said a 156.8. That's going to be hard to beat. We're uh, about a second slower than the uh, the championship leader's lap time. Of course, championship leader now only by 10 points. That uh, that gap slowly disappearing as Pekka Banyaya begins to kick into gear. Just as we all anticipated, really. In fact, I don't think everyone anticipated. I think people don't give Pekka Banyaya the credit he deserves. I read a comment the other day that uh, said something on the lines of... Oh my god, just touched the... Touched the crash there, but <laughs> I just read a comment a few days ago. In fact, it might have been yesterday, as a matter of fact. And the comment said, is if Pekka Banyaya doesn't get involved with the Valentino rossi Mark Marquez rivalry, he should be the rider to beat in the future. I mean, he's already the rider to beat. He's the double MotoGP world champion. I still can't understand how people don't think Pekka Banyaya is as good as he is. I mean, maybe I'm biased, or maybe I'm just not seeing it, but... Two times world champion is more than anyone else the past two seasons. He is the man to beat. You know, it doesn't matter to me who, who it is or who the person is or what they do or what the personality is. If they're the world champion back to back, then they are the cream of the crop. They are the serious head honcho, the big cheese of MotoGP. So I'm, I'm absolutely stunned by that. I mean, if that is your comment and you're watching this video, then... Uh, by all means, <laughs> explain yourselves in the comment section. I don't want to try and call you out or anything, but just peculiar that particular comment. And I don't understand what Valentino Rossi has got to do with Mark Marquez nowadays. I think fans are still holding on to some sort of rivalry, but it's over. Valentino Rossi retired years ago. There's, there's no Rossi in MotoGP now. There's his team, there's the academy, but it's not actually Valentino Rossi. And I strongly don't believe that the ride is themselves just believe what Valentino Rossi believes. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, Enea Bastianini is now actually closing in here, so I've probably got to focus now on trying to keep Alex Rins into the top six. When I started this video, well, at least before I thought about starting this video, of course I've read the comments and I thought, I'm going to have to get this Alex Rins video done soon, did feel the pressure to try and get a good result, and sixth place is 
not really what I was hoping for, to be honest. I was hoping to be at least top five podium finish. I, I wasn't sure about winning it, but I'm actually a little bit concerned that I'm not able to catch up to Maverick Vinales. I have been pushing for the past couple of laps, albeit uh, chatting about everything else about MotoGP, but I really did feel that I could use that superior stre strength on braking into turn 16 to 17 to catch up to the likes of Maverick and Alex Marquez, but it is just not materialising at this stage of the Grand Prix. We've had Pedro Costa crash and gift us uh, sixth place. Now we would just need a few more crashes and then possibly we could fight for the podium positions, but of course we've got to be careful about abusing track limits. Really easy circuit to pick up track limits and also a really easy circuit to crash as well. And I'm just not finding time on Maverick. I'm actually losing a lot of time in the first couple of splits here. 2.4 is the gap. 2.5, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, an Air Bastianini is the last person I want behind me as the laps tick down. The man has superior late race pace. And he's probably going to pit me then for sixth place as well. So I've got to be careful here. I'm going to try and uh, avoid Bastianini from beating me. Now, regarding the Yamaha, I must confess, as much as... I find it difficult to use a MotoGP24. I would like to go to the Yamaha. Oh, Maverick's gone down. Yellow flags out into the cop's corner. Maverick's down. We've blagged our way to a top five. <laughs> yes. Oh, in fact, both Aprilia RSGPs are down. At least factory Aprilias. Maverick and Aleish. I didn't even see where Aleish crashed. Apologies, I completely missed that. He must have been far behind us. But yeah, uh, regarding Yamaha, I would like to be offered a contract for MotoGP24's career mode and try and improve the Yamaha, because last time we had the Gas Gas, which was, which was great. Well, it wasn't to start off with, but it was a great pathway to go into KTM and then move across to Ducati. So I'm hoping that in this year, because KTM was the only team to offer me in Moto2 when I was with the KTM Bowie Motorsports team, in Moto3, I'm hoping I don't just get the KTM route again, where I have to go to Gas Gas and then KTM. I really hope something like one of the Japanese manufacturers, Honda or Yamaha, get in touch, because I'd like that additional challenge when we move up to MotoGP. It would be really cool. And I would like to try and fa fathom out the best way to ride the new YZR M1. I'd like to try and tame it. It's something I'm not very good at. In MotoGP 23 and 24, I never felt all that great with the Yamaha. I felt comfortable, but the lap times would always show otherwise. And that's when I realised that when I started pushing, it became even more difficult to use. I can push all day with the likes of the uh, the KTM or the Ducati, but the Japanese brands I find incredibly difficult. The, the Honda especially because of the constant wheeling, but the Yamaha I find it just doesn't turn. And I'm finding that here a bit actually as well, that I'm I'm not braking hard enough mid-corner or the trail braking. I'm trying to still get the Yamaha to swoop round the corner. I just don't think it's going to work out, is it? I need a miracle now to have a look at a podium, so I think it's going to be down to myself and Enea Bastianini to fight for position five. Two tenths of a second is separating us. I don't think, yeah, if you look on the map in the bottom left corner of your screen, I'm the red dot on the map. You can't even see Bastion, and he is that close to the rear tyre. Behind him is a good chunk of time to Pedro Acosta. It's got to be at least a couple of seconds, so it's down to us to fend off against the beast and hold onto our own to secure a top five. I put that down as a good job, you know. So five, yeah, top five, not too bad. For those who requested Alex Rins, let me know if it's good enough. Give me a thumbs up if it's not, then we've got to do it again or try in another circuit, perhaps. I uh, have expedited the Alex Rins video up to the top spot. I've uh, had more requests for Alex Rins than other riders, so it made sense to prioritise the Spaniard and uh, give him a chance to shine on the Doctor Ace channel. Tenth of a second found then into the first corner. We are finding time, and tell you who isn't finding time, Pekko Banyaya in my, what, second MotoGP24 video in a row. Pekko Banyaya has somehow binned it from a podium position. Ladies and gentlemen, we could have a fourth place on our hands after all, but it's going to take some doing to catch up to the world champion. 
Can we catch up to Pekka Banyai? Seven tenths of a second is the gap. Oh, a little bit deep into Brooklands. And he is storming all over me as well now. So he's going to probably swarm on us and then swarm on Banyaya to get fourth. Jorge Martin, Mark Marquez and Alex Marquez in the Spanish lockout at the top step of the podium right now. And I can't believe I've gone too tight to the apex again. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I said it earlier that I'd get a long lap penalty and there it is. I got a little bit intense there. I got rather excited at the prospect of trying to catch up to a world champion. It happens. It's easy done. Goodness me. Did this in yesterday's video as well when I was catching up. If you haven't seen the Le Mans um, career mode video, I highly recommend you watch it. I don't think I've pushed that hard in a MotoGP video in quite a while. That was on the limit every single lap in the wet conditions in Le Mans. I highly recommend you check out that video. I'll not spoil it for you. Just head over and check it out because it was terrific. I thoroughly enjoyed that video. Anyway, before I talk about that video anymore, because I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> I'm going to still try and catch up to Banyai. I was late on the brakes there going into turn 16. Now for Curva 17 and now for the right hander for Club Corner. We have found a few more tents. That's annoying that because we've pulled in at least three tents on Banyai. And in fact, he's wide there for the Abbey Corner as well. We could actually have fourth place here, but that long lap penalty will yield our chances. And now Jorge Martins binned it as well. Oh, he's out. So this position for fourth is now a position for the win, uh, for third. And But I've got to do the long lap penalty. Oh, I almost abused it then. I almost abused the track limits, but we're good. I might not be able to get the podium after all. <laughs> Look at that. I think I've done that every single time I've had the long lap penalty in Silverstone. I have had the same track limit warning every single time I exit the long lap penalty loop. And it's because I turn in at the exact same points I've been doing before we did the long lap. I can't believe that. If I didn't have that, we could have fought for the podium. We definitely can't end it like this. We need to do another video at some point. The return to Silverstone with Alex Rins coming soon. Get subscribed, guys, because I'm not going to let this one go without a fight. Bit more improvement, bit more time spent with the Yamaha. I think we can do it. From 22nd on the grid to 5th in this video, 22nd on the grid to 3rd possibly in the next, or 22nd on the grid to 1st, who knows? We'll figure it out, we'll definitely give it a try. As, um, Digi and Marco Bezecchi now are, are taking chunks out of Pedro Acosta. In fact, never mind chunks, they're taking positions away. They're up to 6th and 7th respectively. And now it's us to try and catch up to Bastianini, the man who's been behind us the entire race has only just picked us off because of the long lap penalty loop. Well, I'm going to absolutely go for it here again. Leighton possibly can on the brakes. Try and close in quite rapidly. Can I get through here? Not possible. One more lap to go then. I still might be able to catch up to Bastianini. Oh, he touched the apex. He touched the apex of the club corner. We have a chance. We do have a chance. On the brakes. It's gentle with the... Oh, it just feels like it doesn't turn, honestly. Felt like I was really going to build up them for something special, but it just didn't want to give it to me on the right-hand side. Oh, pushing the Michelins to the limits here now. Really closing in on Bastianini. Got to get that power on promptly to catch up to the number 23. Tight to the apex once more. Power on. Ride height device enabled. Can we do it? Lay on the brakes again. Tight to the apex once more to the Brooklyn's corner. We are getting close. We're finding time here. This is a good lap coming in here. Banya is not out of it yet either. If he makes one little mistake, Bastianini will be all over him. Podium still on for them two. Ah, we really struggle out of woodcut though. Which is not the spot that Alex Rins struggles at usually. Cast your minds back to 2019. Going round the outside of Marquez and then back up on the inside on the next lap to secure the victory. Ah, nine tenths of a second. It's not going to happen, is it? I was really thought. I was really thinking we were going to build up then for an overtake on Bastianini, but it's just not happening, is it? Really tight the apex. Oh, I almost lost the front then. Whoa, that felt really peculiar. Oh, and I've cut the I've cut the apex. I'm surprised I don't get more of a penalty than that than just a warning. That was all because I started breaking a bit too early into the Beckett's part. 
and I felt that the front started to wash. Well, I might be able to close in rapidly at least as we go hard on the brakes for the penultimate corner. Let's give it a shot. Late on the brakes. Oh, get it stopped, get it stopped, get it stopped. <laughs> Bit of a nudge there into the rear of Bastianini and now bumping him again into turn 17. Under investigation, could get another penalty for that, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Across the line, we secure fourth place unless we received a penalty for that bit of a nudge uh, we didn't all right then 22nd to fourth that's not too bad long lap penalty included in there as well the duo of alex marquez and mark marquez getting a one two that's brilliant to see i'd love to see that in real life uh, more alex marquez though because i'd like to see alex marquez back at the podium and start to develop a name from himself rather than just being mark's brother <laughs> Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Like and subscribe. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.